Hello everyone, my name is Jose here at Design Visionaries and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of things that the Sketcher has for you in case you're new to NX and you want to learn about the Sketcher. So these are the very basics of the Sketcher. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create very simple profiles and then at the end we'll take a look at some of the geometric constraints that you have at your disposal. Now the profile tool is very nice in the sense that it allows you to create very quick sketches um, without removing yourself from the previous entity. As an example, let's say that I want to draw lines you know, continuously. I don't want it to end at all, so I can just keep clicking. I can say click, 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 click. As you can see, it never disconnects me from the previous entity. And that's very nice. I'm hitting Control Z to undo that, and now I can also do a line arc line. So let's say I want to do that. I can say click, click to terminate the line, hold down the left mouse button, and I can drag out a curve like so, and then I can do a line. And now we have our line arc line. So the profile tool is very nice in the sense that you can create things without having to disconnect yourself from the previous entity. Now the rectangle tool is also very simple. All you have to do is select your method. So you have by two points, you have by three points, and you have from center. So let's choose from center here and say we want to snap a rectangle to the center. I can select the origin here, click and click. As you can see, I have a rectangle. Now these gray dimensions that you see here, this is what is called an auto dimension. Now some folks know them as a weak dimension. And what that is, is NX needs to assign these dimensions in order to give it some arbitrary definition. But it is your job to come in afterwards to either remove these by using constraints or you can redefine them in order to get more strong dimensions so they turn into a different color once you redefine them. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control Z to remove the rectangle. The line tool is very similar to the profile tool. The only difference is that if you use it, it will disconnect you from the previous entity. So I can say click and click and as you can see it doesn't keep me connected to the previous line. So if I come over here and say click and click, it just adds it as a separate line. Now you don't actually have to terminate your line in order to give it definition. All you have to do if you have a length in mind is type the length in here. You see my 36 over there is highlighted. I can enter a value of 100 and leave the angle at 270. And as you can see, it makes a curve that is 100 millimeters in length. Uh, and it uses that angle to determine its direction. So it's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control z to undo those lines. And the Arc tool, you can create an arc with three points. So I'm going to say click and click and then click. As you can see, I created an arc just by hitting three points. And of course, you have other methods, but usually the arc by three points is the most used option. The circle command is also very simple. All you have to do is select your center point for the circle and then click to terminate it at your desired diameter. In addition, you can also choose the center and enter a diameter yourself. Let's say that you choose 120 millimeters. As you can see, when I define that 120 millimeters, it becomes a blue dimension. So that's a strong dimension. That's a dimension that we have defined and technically this is a constraint in itself. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and control Z. Finally, the last one is the point command. And the point command allows you to simply place points wherever your heart desires. All you have to do is just click wherever you want, and it creates points like so. As you can see, there are a bunch of weak dimensions here, or auto dimensions. And NX is telling you that you either need to redefine them or eliminate them by using a geometric constraint. If you look down here where my mouse is, where it's making that circle, it tells you that the sketch is fully constrained with 30 auto dimensions. So that means there are 30 dimensions that we need to either eliminate or redefine in order to make this sketch fully constrained. I'm just going to go ahead and control Z on that. So with that being said, the thing that I want to show you now is the geometric constraints. And this is usually where folks get most confused, primarily because other CAD softwares, they don't have as many constraints as NX. But before we do that, let's use our new knowledge of creating these simple shapes 
in order to sort of create a layout and then we'll use the geometric constraints to create this sketch so I'm just gonna put one circle over here now again this is all arbitrary right there's nothing here that is given a definition other than the way that I'm establishing these shapes right so something that looks like this so I encourage you to do the exact same thing just place these two circles one on the left one on the right and these two lines that are just out in space now with that being said our end goal is to align these two circles together but they have to be on the x-axis and in addition we need to connect these two with a tangent constraint uh, that ties this curve, these two curves, to the circles themselves. So in order to activate the geometric constraint, all you have to do is hit the C key on your keyboard. So if you hit the C key right there, C as in Charlie, you can see that we get the geometric constraints window. And in addition, if you're not a fan of the shortcut, you can also come up here and hit the geometric constraints. So NX has a lot of constraints. And the first one that you should see is called coincident. Now, when I think of coincident, I think of things stacking on top of each other. To give you an example of coincident, let's say that I want this little circle to go inside of the big circle. Well, I would use coincident, and then I would select the center of this circle, the point there, to be on top of this point here, and they would sort of be superimposed on each other. That's not the one that I want to use though. So let's take a look at the other one, which is the point on curve command. Now this one allows me to select a point and tie it to a certain curve. In this case, I can choose the centers of these circles and tie them to the X axis. The NX sketcher treats the axes like a curve. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll choose point on curve. Let's start with the little circle here. I'll choose the little circle come over here to the window hit the red asterisk to move on to the next object and choose the x-axis I will do the exact same thing for the big circle click click and click the x-axis And as you can see we have successfully tied the centers of these circles to the x-axis very nice now what we need to do is use a tangent constraint to tie these curves to the circles so I'm going to come over here to the tangent constraint. I will select this curve here to be tangent with the big circle. Uh, make sure you head over to the next one like so. Boop. And then I would tie this one to that big circle again as well. I will do the exact same thing for the little circle. So click, click, and click, click. Now that's okay. We're getting a little bit of an error. Uh, primarily because of the way that this thing looks but you know we'll fix that in a minute so we'll just say click and click there we go so now we have our tangent constraint on both of these now how do we know that we have that tangent constraint and that point on curve constraint well if you notice there are these little uh, blue lines that tie the straight line to the circle so that gives us uh, the notation that this is a tangent constraint in addition, if you move your mouse over to that area, you can see it says tangent constraint. You could tell that this is a point on curve constraint by moving your mouse over to this dotted line. And if you leave it there for a couple of seconds, it will tell you point on curve constraint. Now this is all nice and dandy, but now we need to essentially, you know, give this its final form. All we did was just uh, constrain it, uh, but we, now we need to give it some actual definition. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the little circle here. So I'll double click on this weak dimension here that I have. And if I double click it, I have the ability to edit that dimension. So this guy is going to be 20 millimeters. Now one thing that NX does very well is it scales things in a fashion that, you know, just works wonders. You don't have to worry too much about the scaling. Uh, NX does a very good job at scaling things for you. That takes care of the little circle. Now let's take care of the big circle. So let's say that your sketch looks as convoluted as mine does. If you move over to the rapid dimension tool up here or hit the D key on your keyboard, D as in delta, you can select the rapid dimension tool. And in the method, you can change the method to say diameter. 
Now inferred is usually sufficient, especially if you're starting out, but my advice to you is to try your best to dictate what you want to measure. So I'm gonna choose diametral here. I'll choose this circle there. I'm just gonna click it over here. And this circle is going to be a diameter of 50. Okay. So now that we have that, we have a couple of things that look pretty funny right now. Uh, first of all, we have established that this is 50 millimeters in diameter and this is 20 millimeters in diameter, but we have not established how this line connects to this line. All we know is that it is tangent. So if we use another point on curve constraint again, I can choose this endpoint here to go to the circle. As you can see, it moves it very nicely. I will do the exact same thing for the bottom. The next thing that I want to do is get the center of this entire thing uh, on the y-axis. So in order to do that, I'm going to head over to the vertical alignment constraint. Now the vertical alignment constraint will allow me to select the midpoint of this line that is tangent in, in you know, reality you can choose whichever one you want you can choose the top or the bottom they will be identical but I'll choose this top one here I'll say that this midpoint needs to go on the origin now make sure that you head over here and select this guy and then choose the origin there and as you can see that's what it looks like I will do the exact same thing for the bottom click and click Now the reason why it looks so funny is because we have not defined any length for these tangent lines. Uh, but in order to do that, all I'm going to do is activate the C key on my keyboard. And I'll use the point on curve constraint to tie this guy there. As you can see, we have successfully tied those two together. And now this is starting to look more elegant. The final definition that we have to give to this thing is an actual dimension from this center of the circle to the other center of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the rapid dimension tool one more time. And now I will choose the horizontal method. So I'm going to say that the dimension from this center to that center needs to be defined. And now we go ahead and give it a value of 150. And as you can see, if you look down here, it says sketch is fully constrained, which means that we have completed our task. There are no auto dimensions left. And I'm going to go ahead and say finish. And that is your sketch. So hopefully this little tutorial helped you understand the sketcher a little bit better. If you have any further questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. You can also reach out to us on our website and we will happily assist you with whatever you may need. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.